Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Um, today we would like to look at a slightly disappointing topic. Yeah, very disappointing topic. Not really, but here comes kind of the idea. So I hope I convinced you by now that the spectrum itself is just a ridiculously great, well, invariant and easy to compute kind of statistic data um, of a graph. And kind of the point that I'm trying to make in this video is that as soon as you go to something less canonical, so spectrum, some other collection of all eigenvalues, kind of a very canonical object in a certain sense that I won't make precise. Anyway, so it's a certain sense of a very canonical object. And as soon as you kind of leave the world of, oh, that, that is clearly important to and enter the world of that might be important, there's something we lose along the way. We still get kind of cool statements and I will show you some of them in this video, I will show you one of them and we'll see some more, but kind of they are not as impressive anymore. That's all I'm saying. So in that sense, it's a bit disappointing, but not really because we can also say that there is still something we can say, so that's also very great. And it's actually not so bad. Uh, today, we'll see, it's about connectivity and um, about the second largest eigenvalue. So we are interested in the second largest eigenvalue um, for a graph. And as I said, that is not quite as canonical as the spectrum itself or as the largest eigenvalue. So let me just remind you that if we have a crazy graph, then we get a, well, <laughs> it's kind of a, a crazy spectrum if you want. Well, there's certain patterns in the spectrum. Um, and here, well, there's clearly the one that kind of sticks out is a Perron Frobenius eigenvalue. The leading eigenvalue. And of course, the whole spectrum itself is also very great. So these are kind of really cool. Um, and there are a lot of other things. And you might wonder how important are those for properties of graphs? Okay, the leading one kind of is really cool and it essentially is related to gross rates um, of the matrix, of the adjacency matrix. It is just, it's just ridiculously good. The spectrum itself, I haven't have this on the slide itself because the slide is already too full. But anyway, the spectrum itself is also pretty cool. And as I said, they are kind of canonical objects. Uh, so what about the others? Um, the others are less canonical. So why should I prefer this one, for example, over this one? They look pretty much kind of the same type of importantness to me. Um, not quite clear. So let me just go to graphs. So this is directed graph. So directed graphs have kind of real spectrums, like the, the real real spectrums in the complex plane. Uh, honest spectrums is maybe a better word, kind of in the complex plane. And um, the, the the graphs itself, so without orientation, always have real numbers as, as, as a spectrum. And in the real numbers, it makes kind of sense to look at the second largest diagonal. So that's not as canonical as the largest one, obviously, but maybe there's still something uh, we can say about the second largest number two. And I will show you some examples as we go along. Uh, in this video, there will be one example and then we'll see some more statements. But one should expect already at this point, as I already said, that it's not as impressive as for the Perron Fabinius eigenvalue itself, but it's still, it's still useful and, and pretty cool to know. And again, of course, the second one is not much harder to compute than the first one, right? So just kind of the same. And the game I want to play for today is I always have a graph G, some parent graph, some overlying graph, and I have some small graph H in it. And I would like to say something about H using the second eigenvalue of G. So here's the spectrum of this guy. Remember that this notation just means multiplicity, um, but let's ignore that anyway. For now, the spectrum is just whatever it is. And the spectrum here is whatever it is. Um, the one that you see uh, here, respectively here. And I'm not interested in the top one. So I kind of don't want this one because we already did this one. I'm, I'm interested in the second. So in this case, it's roughly 2.24. Okay, second largest eigenvalue, 2.24, fine. Um, and it kind of turns out, and that's kind of very crucial, what really matters is, uh, if you look at this picture, some of this distance here is what really matters. So this is kind of really important. So how far away the leading eigenvalue actually is, or here in this simplified picture, just the distance between them. So um, this lambda one, the biggest one, minus lambda two, the second biggest one. Uh, and in particular, it kind of matters how we can squeeze numbers inside. 
So I'm looking here at numbers that are in between lambda two and lambda one. So for example, two would be um, in, uh, 2.5 would be in between, but two, the leading eigenvalue on the right-hand side is not. So two, the leading eigenvalue for my subgraph is not in between this distance. And I kind of claim now that this distance plays an important role. And it turns out that in this case, the, the graph you see is just, well, this part, let me mark it here. It's this, this triangle and it's this triangle. So it's not connected. And that's actually related to the leading eigenvalue being not in between those two numbers. So it doesn't fit in between those two numbers. To make that completely clear, I have a second example for you. So here again, uh, here the distance is a little bit bigger. So the second uh, eigenvalue is 1.7-ish. And here's my subgraph. And this time it's connected. So you, we can just follow it. Yeah, very good. And so it's a connected subgraph. And the two actually fits very nicely in between those two numbers. And that is a real statement. So if you can fit the leading eigenvalue of the smaller graph within this interval given by the second biggest and the biggest, then your graph is connected, which is a bit strange. But somehow um, it should tell you that the, the biggest eigenvalue is kind of um, the growth rate of the pass. So it certainly is somehow connected to uh, connected to connectivity, absolutely. So connectivity of the graph, but some of the second eigenvalue really sees some of the, the connectivity. And what you need to do is you need to fit in uh, eigenvalues in between lambda one and lambda two. So that's all the point here. So here it does fit, and here it does not fit. Right? It is not connected. It is connected, and that's exactly the statement. So if you have a graph and the second largest eigenvalue. And from the induced subgraph H in my examples, the one is bigger, and I haven't written it down, but it will be, of course, smaller or equal to lambda one because it's a subgraph. So it's somewhere in between lambda two and lambda one, then H is actually connected. And that's kind of an interesting statement already. So the second biggest eigenvalue knows something about connectivity of subgraphs, which is not obvious at all, but it comes out if you just do uh, the well, the, the mathematics here are not so difficult to prove. Um, let me just stress that the second angle value is certainly less canonical. So here you can already see, for example, that it appears twice, which certainly is very different from the leading one. The leading one is kind of unique. And here the, the, the second one is a bit well, less canonical. So th that we have a statement like this, and we have several of those types of statements that I'm going to show you in the next few videos, it's actually a bit surprising. So even the second largest eigenvalue, which is far away from being really canonical in any sense, in contrast to the spectrum or the largest one, uh, still has cool statements. See, it's related to connectivity of a subgraph. So let me repeat what we have seen, um, because it's maybe a bit confusing. You take, uh, strictly speaking, you look at both, if you want, the biggest and the second biggest, and look at the interval between them. And if you could stick in uh, the leading one of your subgraph that it is connected. That's kind of the statement. We lose something along the way uh, because it's somewhat not canonical, but it's still it's kind of the first type form of a statement involving not, well, it, it somehow involves the leading eigenvalue, but in an implicit way. But really it involves the second largest eigenvalue, and which is a bit surprising again. I, I know I sort of sound like a broken record, but it's worthwhile to say it again because it's somewhat less canonical than the leading one. But we lose something along the way. So this is not an if and only if. So here, this one does not fit into, but still uh, the subgraph here, which is just a triangle itself, is connected. So it's just one way. It's just a one-way street. So whenever you have this situation, you can really fit in your eigenvalue into this little interval. Then this is awesome. Then we are good. And otherwise, we kind of need to work a bit harder. But I think that's that's totally fine. So we have here a statement involving the second largest eigenvalue, which I already find a bit surprising. As I said, I know I sound like a broken record, but the second largest eigenvalue is certainly way less canonical than the largest one. But here's already an easy, kind of easy form of type of statement telling you something about connectivity of subgraphs. And it turns out the second largest eigenvalue still has quite a big number of interesting statements attached to it. And that's what we are uh, going to explore in the next few videos. Okay, let me repeat what we have seen. Okay, 
I hope I convinced you that the spectrum is great. It just knows a lot of the graph. The, the, a little bit weaker is the knowledge of the biggest eigenvalue, but the biggest eigenvalue, the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, is still fantastic, and it knows quite a bit about your graph, like the growth rate of paths. And then you should somehow expect that you just go down in information if you want, and in information that you kind of keep off your graph, you will lose something along the way. And in that sense, I still find it quite beautiful and surprising that the second largest eigenvalue still tells you quite a lot about your graph. And I just showed you kind of a baby example um, of what it knows about your graph. It kind of knows the connectivity of subgraphs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.